Hello, everyone. OK, and uh, what can I say? Welcome back. Uh, I'd posted a video about uh, Silicon Valley Bank a week ago with my initial take on on that. And uh, there were a number of comments and questions from from people who saw that video. And I thought as an interesting follow up, um, I would just touch on some of those questions that I answered on the LinkedIn uh, comments uh, section, uh, but here with this fresh video. Now, I promise to keep this uh, 10 minutes or under, so hopefully it shouldn't be quite as as long as the, the the last one. So one of the questions I got asked about the Silicon Valley Bank after I posted that video was, um, what are the core principles of treasury balance sheet management that were neglected in the case of Silicon Valley Bank? And how did the absence of regulatory discipline, such as liquidity coverage ratio and net stable funding ratio, affect their capacity to handle market liquidity risk? And uh, my answer to that was, uh, first of all, yes, it's intriguing that um, the, the Basel rules, guidance that's prop followed by most countries around the world for most of their banks didn't apply uh, to in some cases, like for example, with liquidity coverage ratio to Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, but my answer to, to that uh, when I was engaged in that conversation was, uh, I wonder if that's any kind of excuse. I mean, ultimately, there's no reason a bank can't follow good practice itself in and of itself. Um, it doesn't have to do simply what the regulator is asking it to do. And I'm wondering if we've arrived at some seeming paradox uh, of the impact of excessive regulatory rules, namely that by being so prescriptive, banks stop doing what they consider to be right or good practice and content themselves uh, with only following regulatory compliance. And I, I gave an example about uh, there was an experiment carried out in a Swiss it's not Swiss. No, that's uh, that's <laughs> Swiss. Why is Swiss on my mind? I'll come to that. Uh, a Swedish town in the 70s when they got rid of the, the road markings and the road signs and, and, and traffic lights and things. And apparently road accidents dropped in number. Now, I don't think that would be the case in a large crowded city, but I am wondering if regulation isn't isn't um, isn't simply the answer to it. Good practice has to be to be to be undertaken uh, by banks following balance sheet risk principles. So that was my answer to that one. Then uh, there was a question on how did the social media age and a concentrated deposit of base contribute to the sudden run on the bank? And what are some potential implications of such a scenario in the modern banking industry? Now, that is very relevant, I think, today. We are in the social media age. And compared to, say, Northern Rock in 2007 or prior liquidity uh, risk bank runs, um, we have got a situation whereby uh, news travels fast, people can act instantly, and they do act instantly. Uh, and that could be on fake news, even. It could be if a news story came out on social media um, that wasn't necessarily accurate. If people thought it was true, they could just click their, uh, well, I was about to say click their mouse button, but they're on their smartphone, aren't they? They could simply withdraw funds uh, on their phone straight away. And that means um, a bank run ha can happen very quickly. We saw the, the billions of dollars that went out in, in, in 48 hours from Silicon Valley Bank. And we have to now put in place a, a monitoring mechanism and a mitigation against this very immediate instant uh, bank run, uh, which uh, the, the risk of which is higher because uh, of the, the, the wild, fast spread of information uh, due to social media. Now, there are a number of points that, are, that, that this should be explored further by banks, uh, by ALCO committees uh, in banks when addressing liquidity risk um, in the social media age, particularly when there's a concentration of, of uh, certain depositor types. Now, one, another question I got asked was, let's say five months after Silicon Valley Bank had, had, uh, had been operating without... Um, no, uh, without a CRO, you were suddenly appointed as a new CRO. What would you have done to correct things before they blew up? That's a very interesting question. Um, uh, I'd like to think that I would do th at least the following. First of all, uh, having noted the structure of the balance sheet, inform the board of the nature of the risk exposure for both interest rate risk and funding concentration uh, so that they're aware of it, and also advise the board to inform the regulator of the current position and outline our steps to remedy the situation. Okay, straight away, get with the regulator and say, we have... I'd identified or I've identified or my team's identified uh, these issues with the balance sheet. There's, there's significant risk exposure for both rates and liquidity or funding uh, and funding. And so here is what we're going to put in place to, to remedy it. Of course, it could have been too late, but assuming it, we still have time, uh, we address the depositor concentration uh, by raising term funding, longer dated funding beyond instant access from a wider customer franchise, uh, advise the board of the resulting PNL impact because it's going to be significant. Um, start to put in place hedges uh, for the longest dating securities to reduce the economic value of equity exposure of the of the bond portfolio uh, in parallel possibly with unwinding some of these positions to realize losses but in a more um 
uh, uh, telegraphed in advanced way so it doesn't hit instantly. Um, revise the medium term plan and widen the na narrow nature of the, the, the bank's business model and customer franchise. Uh, see if there is any appetite for tier two capital uh, or I was about to say additional tier one but that's something that's also in the news as well uh, today. Um, reorganize the governance framework so that the asset and liability committee, the ALCO, reports direct to the board and uh, a non-exec from the board attends it. Uh, perhaps have more frequent meetings to address the balance sheet risk that we've identified but also make sure ALCO has the authority to ensure that any remedial action is taken so it, it isn't it doesn't sit lower down in the hierarchy and so its advice is ignored uh, meet with the regulators again on a regular basis to inform them of progress uh, and to tell her how to, to let them know how our plans are going uh, and hopefully we would have been able to to, to mitigate some of the worst uh, exposures uh, before there was any kind of bank run. Now, it still may have been too late. Uh, we don't know this, but uh, I, there are I do think there are things that could have been done if uh, to address balance sheet risk, um, if, 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 if it's sufficient um, risk. Uh, management uh, expertise or, or, or authority had been brought in, in in time. Now, I've seen a couple of comments from people on LinkedIn saying, oh, this is all just hindsight. You know, you would have done the same as Silicon Valley Bank. Um, I have to humbly suggest uh, that I don't think I would have. I have to refute that suggestion. I don't think uh, I would have done the same as them, uh, particularly since I've been saying more or less the same sort of things about managing balance sheet risk um, since uh, since 2006, my first publication, 2007, I should say. So uh, I don't think it's hindsight, but whether there would have been enough time to fix the problem, I don't know. Uh, what else? Um, and then finally, there was a question on, there's still a shortage of people who understand asset liability management in banking, it would appear. That should be an opportunity. Now, I'm not so sure, so this was a comment on, on my video, I'm not so sure there's necessarily a shortage of people within the industry who understand bank asset liability management. Uh, what I think it is, there's a shortage of people who understand bank asset liability management at the relevant or high enough level of seniority. So at the board level and the executive committee level, uh, it may well be that at certain institutions, there is a shortage of people who do understand balance sheet risk and the exposure of the balance sheet to external factors like interest rates, foreign exchange rates, um, and deposit rates, funding rates, so on and so forth. So I think that in some institutions, there is that shortage, certainly. And uh, that needs to be addressed. One can address it by having the Asset Liability Committee uh, at a sufficient level of seniority within the governance structure. That's something else also that uh, I've, I've been talking about for a while. Um, in fact, I've changed my mind on it compared to when I first wrote about Asset Liability Committees, about ALCOs uh, back in 2007. I, I was in line with the orthodoxy that they report into the EXCO, which reports into the board. Over, over that time, I've modified my views to, to the point where I think that the, the ALCO needs to be uh, at a sufficient level of seniority that it does have authority over balance sheet management actions. It can uh, advise and, uh, the, the board to take to action and in a way uh, that the board would listen to it. You know, it's got the sufficient authority and, and seniority. So it's not so much a shortage of, of, of individuals, it's, it's a shortage of individuals with this relevant expertise at the right level within a particular institution. OK, so uh, that was a follow up uh, and I've kept it that to 10 minutes, I think um, that was a follow up uh, to questions and comments I'd had on my previous video. I hope uh, this follow up has been interesting. Um, but of course, uh, here we are today, 20th of March, a week or so after the, the failure of Silicon Valley Bank. And it's already old news, isn't it? It's yesterday's news because we have the Credit Suisse. <laughs> Uh, issue to discuss now and that's getting a lot of airplay uh, not just on social media but also on the mainstream news that of course is a wholly different kettle of fish to use the old english expression uh, than silicon valley bank a whole different kettle of fish uh, it has been taken over so hopefully that should stop any kind of contagion or knock-on effect let's see how that goes um and there's a debate about uh you know how the additional tier one or the contingent convertible bond holders been treated so possibly a conversation for another time. I uh, hope in the meantime, uh, we uh, we are able to put this issue to bed and uh, hopefully there isn't any further contagion or equally hopefully, uh, banks are getting on top of uh, the old age, age old principles of uh, managing balance sheet risk. Okay, uh, thanks for your, uh, for your company and your attention and I'll see you soon. Have a good evening, bye-bye.